Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Paul Farage. He's going to talk to us about Medjugorje. Good afternoon, everyone. I've got one thing in common with Janelle that just left. Like her, French is my first language. But of course, that's all I've got in common. I was born in France nearly 80 years ago. In fact, this morning, uh, Father uh, Winchman was saying that on June the 12th, he will enter the decade of the 70s. Well, just a few days later, on June the 80s, I will enter the decade of the 80s. So. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the story of my life. It's full of holes. <laughs> but what I'm going to tell you is my involvement with Medjugorje News. As every one of you may or may not know, I'm not only the chap who is annoying you with the cameras, but I've also got a little uh, a table over there with Medjugorje News, uh, of which I'm now the editor, and I will tell you the whole story. It happened that in December 1993, a person from Medjugorje, Margaret Rieger, who is the one that bought that statue and that we've seen here, had arranged a weekend I've got here the pamphlet of that thing, A Weekend with the Madonna of Medjugorje. We would like to explore the spirituality of Medjugorje to discover just what is happening there and what happened at Palmerston North on February the 6th. I had a look at that and I was a bit interested. I must also go back in time saying that when I was in France in 1991, I was a co at a cousin of mine who had a book written by Father Laurentin on Medjugorje, or more precisely, a scientific study of the visionary while they were actually seeing Our Lady. And they were wired up with wires all over the place and all their... Uh, uh, that they were, they were studying all their uh, reflexes and all that. And they discovered that they were perfectly normal when uh, they were on, uh, on ecstasy. And uh, so, to me, I, I knew that there was something there. That, so, I later on, uh, from New Zealand, I asked him to send me that book, which I read in the course of a cruise on a yacht from uh, Fangare to New Caledonia, I had about seven days at sea to read it and absorb it. And I became more and more convinced of the truth of what happened in that little village in Bosnia Herzegovina. So on that uh, December day in 1993, at eight o'clock in the morning, there was a force that was stronger than me, decided, oh, you've got to go there, but my boy. So I took my car and I went there and I arrived there on the afternoon. I hadn't booked anything, but there was a room waiting for me. God works in funny ways sometimes. On the following morning, it was a magnificent day, beautiful summer day, and we all uh, broke up in little groups of uh, tents all over the place. And because to just discuss between ourselves what actually attracted us to Medjugorje, and as we were starting, uh, just before we were starting the discussion, a lady in our group was pointing her finger at another lady in another group saying, that lady got her rosary bead out of her pocket in the chain and turned to gold. Now I had my hand in my own pocket, you know, fondling my own uh, rosary beads and I said, shall I look? Shall I? <laughs> And of course, the curiosity got the better of me. And when I got it out, you probably can't see it, but the chain is definitely very bright gold. And I cried. 
And I said to Our Lady, I think you want me to go there. So I made a bargain with her. And I said, okay, I will go there. But I haven't got the money. So you'll have to find me the money. So I came back home. And uh, I made all the arrangement to go. And I waited for the money to come. <laughs> and about three weeks before I was ready to leave, I got a phone call from a very distant relation in France telling me, Paul, I put 10,000 francs in the bank for you. So that was that. At that time, I was thinking of going by myself. But when that happened, I said to my wife, OK, look, you've got to come with me. So this is what we did. And we went there. And, uh, and we went there in May, early May for the first time, May 1994. It was the war was in full swing. We could hear the, the machine gun, the, the, the guns, the, the fighter fl flying over the, over the village. We could see the destructions everywhere. It was absolutely shocking. Mostly the churches, the way that, that the, the devil really went on to it. It was really dreadful. But the place itself in Medjugorje was such peace, such a wonderful peace. And I went there again uh, at the end of June, at the time of the, uh, the anniversary of the apparition. And I arrived in a, a split on the morning of my 70th birthday. And I got a lift with a young Italian man to Medjugorje. And I spent a wonderful, uh, wonderful week there, too. Now, a lot of people would think, oh, did you see the sun uh, spinning? Did you see this? It's, no, I didn't. But there is something that was far greater for me that happened in Medjugorje. And I hope I can say that without breaking down too much. On the 17th of July, 1986, my second son, Eric, hung himself on a forest near Rotorua. He was not found until the following evening. And I was really absolutely stunned. But that was not all. About three and a half years later, my last son, Patrick, who was at the time a bit of a hero in New Zealand, he had even been given a medal by Prince Charles for an heroic act. And he was at the time on a warship that was anchored off the Vancaraparoa Peninsula. At midnight, he started to write some goodbye letters. His last letter was dated at 3 o'clock in the morning. In early morning, we got a phone call to say that uh, he had jumped overboard. And I said, he's a very good swimmer. No. He put a stone around his neck, and he dived. They discovered his body. Some divers went down. And I was a wreck. Truly, every day, I was crying all the time. But the miracle to me happened in Medjugorje when I found peace there. And I knew then that my children were safe. So I'll continue my story with Medjugorje news. When I was there, I said to Our Lady, I said, I don't know why you called me there, but I promise you one thing, is that whatever you ask of me, I promise you, I won't say no. So I came back full of enthusiasm, expecting everything to happen straight away. Nothing at all. <laughs> Until the following year, where uh, I went to the uh, 1995 convention, and I felt a bit guilty not to do anything. So I phoned John Porteous one day, and I said, look, John, I said, I had met the guy, you know, I just spoke to him over the phone. He said, John, uh, can I help you? Now, at the time, he was publishing a little brochure called Medjugorje News. 
That was done by photocopying some articles, reducing them on a photocopying machine, and sending them to a few of his friends. And of course, that snowballed, and more and more of his friends wanted to get that. And he had, at the time, about 200 people on his mailing list. And what he said to me, he said, yes, Paul, you can help me. Take Medjugorje off my hand. Gosh, you could have hit me with a sledgehammer. <laughs> I, mean, I knew nothing about publishing, nothing about that. But look, I've got a sneaky feeling, is he there? I don't know, that he must have had a, a line to, uh, to Our Lady because he, I said to him, I said, look, I'm only a pensioner. I can't afford to do it for nothing. I said, uh, oh, he said, well, you can ask for a subscription. Pray about it. Of course, I didn't have to because I knew that is exactly what Our Lady wanted. So a couple of days later on, I said, yes, I'll do it. And so he wrote to the few people that were on his list, and they started to send me some money. Of course, I had a lot of things to do because I wanted to start on the right footing, so I went to see a lawyer first to start a, a society called Medjugorje News Trust to register as a charitable organization with donor status. That means that everybody that sent me donation could claim that against their income tax. I also see my, saw my, an accountant that uh, helped me also with the financial side of it. And I tell you what, I was thrown at the deep end because I knew nothing about publishing. I, I just had uh, purchased a, a, a computer, but I knew nothing about much about computers. So I had to learn and learn fast. And, uh, well, the Holy Spirit was there to help me. But I tell you what, not only the Holy Spirit, but the hairy legs, uh, Satan was there to also put... <laughs> You've got no idea the trouble that I went through to get it. But sure enough, Our Lady's got the better, and she knew, she knew what she was doing. And so with the help of quite a few... And so I started to publish Medjugorje News. I, the first issue, I think, had about uh, a thousand copies, you know, two or three hundred sent to the people, the rest going to be distributed around the churches or this and there. And now, at the present time, uh, I publish over 4,000 copies. It is sent all over New Zealand, in many churches, and in 28 countries throughout the world. The mail that I'm getting is incredible. And I don't want to, to press myself because it's not my work. It's really Our Lady's, Our Lady's work. The work that I do is nothing. I'm just a tool. And whenever I get an issue out, I look at it, hey, it's not too bad. It can't be me. And, <laughs> and it, it must be right because everybody keeps on telling me how good it is and how much they rely on uh, on that magazine for their spiritual life. Now, what I would like also to tell you is that it was for me a growing uh, journey because for many, many years I stayed away from the church. Even though when I was young, I used to go to Mass every day. I used to serve, at a, being a servant at a, a ser, a serving Mass at a, a Carmelite monastery. I even spent three years in a seminary in France. But after that, I had a very adventurous life. I left France in 1950 on a small yacht with that engine. I arrived in Tahiti, left that yacht, had some adventure of all sorts, and I'm not going to tell you too much about them because uh, you know what IT is like. And uh, three years later, I got onto another yacht, the same size, also with that engine, and we landed in New Zealand. And then I got married to a, unfortunately, I did not know at the time, to a woman who was alcoholic. We had five children, but 
she left me after a while. And later on, my marriage was annulled, and I had the great fortune to meet my present wife, who is right there in here. Now, this is, this is, an, this is an, another very, very interesting story. I was supposed to be a Catholic. She was Anglican. She's the one that brought me back to the faith. And I love her all the much for that. And so, uh, once I was back in the faith, I, then I got involved with Medjugorje and Medjugorje News. But the day that I could go back and have communion for the first time after so many years away from the church was such a fantastic experience that the Eucharist for me was so incredibly immense, you know, that I couldn't help it. And I have to go every day to Mass because this is the greatest event that happened in the world today. The, at Medjugorje, some of the, uh, uh, sometimes the visionary, they ask, is that, is when you see Our Lady the highlight of your day? They say, no, the highlight of our days is going to Mass. And I hope that you will understand why, to me, it's a thirst to have Eucharist every day that I would really be very, very hungry, hungry with, 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 without it, you know. I, I really need that for my spiritual life. But I also discovered quite a lot of things, too. I discovered that I could trust in the Lord 100%, because look, whatever I did, I couldn't, I, I didn't know how that could be done, possibly, humanly possibly, possible, but everything, all the, all, the, all the problem was solved. And I would like also to tell you some story. I'm the oldest of 14 children. My father was a great, great religious man. And I remember one day, that was during the war, coming to see him to ask for five francs, probably the equivalent of five dollars of these days, of today, to pay for her sports fee. And he opened his drawer and he said, look, there was nothing. He said, aren't you worried with all those children with that family? He said, no. He said, what did Jesus say? Look at the birds in the, in the sky, look at the lilies in the field. They don't need to worry about it, and I don't. And sure enough, my father always had what it wanted. And there was a very holy priest called Père Brottier, who had started a, uh, 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 a house, if you see, for the uh, uh, orphans and to teach them a, a trade. And he made a deal with uh, our Lord. He said, look, I need a thousand francs every day. And sure enough, I don't want any more. And sure enough, every day he had these thousand francs. Until one day, at the end of the day, the thousand francs hadn't come. So he said to his helper, go and have a look in the letterbox. And sure enough, there was an anonymous donation of a thousand francs. And that happens all the time. And I'm sure, I'm sure that you have experienced the same thing. But what I'd like you to do is to trust even more. There is no problem that, you cannot, that cannot be solved with the help of God. I've seen some people that thought they, they had no issues, you know, except probably taking their own life. I thought, that's not true. Just put your trust in the Lord and every difficulty will be wiped away. Another thing that I would like you also to remember is that you have a guardian angel. And I know I've got one. And he's been working over time. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've been under several bombardments. I've been shot at three times by the German. I was condemned to death twice as a hostage. And later on, 
when I was at sea. I remember one stormy night going out of New Zealand back to the islands on the yacht and the skipper had made a mistake and it was night time and we saw some, we were just on the top of Cape Colville and there was something that looked like tide rips and at the last minute he said, no, we're on the rock, we lose the boat. There is nothing we could do. We had no engine, we couldn't even turn the boat around. So I grabbed everything, I took my shoes off and waited for the big shock. Well, at the last minute, I think the guardian angel must have taken our boat and threw it over the rocks, and we went through without even touching the rocks. Later on, and that was not very long ago, actually, that was in uh, 96, or 90, yes, in 96, I was coming up to, I was coming down to Auckland from Fagre for a meeting with the bishops and all the heads of the churches. I was quite involved with another organization and I got clipped by a speeding truck. My car did two somersaults, three rolls, landed on his roof, and caught on fire. Well, I'm here to tell you the story. <laughs> so. Please, please, pray to your guardian angel every day. Now, a little wee tip that I can tell you that, because I have done that and it worked. You want to meet somebody very badly. You don't know how to get hold of that person. Okay. You ask your guardian angel, give, it an, give him a name. Give him a name, if, 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 even if you don't, give him a name. So you can, you can be on a personal one-to-one -one base uh, with, with him. And so you say to your guardian angel, can go and see his guardian angel and tell him that I want to meet. <laughs> And I tell you what, it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> People sometimes think that there is the hazard to coincidences, so on. There is never any coincidence. There is always God incidence that whatever happened to you is for a purpose. If you pray, and you're not, your prayers are not answered the way you ask. You can be sure of one thing, it will be answered, but not the way you thought, and all, and, and all for the better. I have experienced that one too. I was going to tell you about whenever I pray, one of the things that is on my mind always is the infinite greatness of God. I'll give you a very small comparison. Take an orange. That orange is the sun. Take a pinhead. The pinhead is the size of the earth. That is the comparison size. The orange and the pinhead are eight meters away. That is the comparison. You know where the next star would be? In Wellington. It, it is huge. And we're only a small part of the solar system, which is itself has over two billion stars. And as Brandon said this morning, there are over 200 galaxies in the universe. So imagine, do you know what a billion is? A thousand million? Well, how many minutes do you think? How many years would, 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 you, would you have uh, 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 with one million minutes? Well, I'll tell you, 1,900 years. If you had to count to a billion at the rate of once every second, and I tell you what, you will have to count very fast, it would take you 32 years to do it. So you can see that a, a billion, it's not just an imaginary figure, it's there. So it just, and that, that, that gives me the, the amazing immensity and the greatness of God. Well, I could tell you quite a lot more about it, but I think the time is marching on. So there is just two things that I would like to say. First of all, about Medjugorje News, our uh, uh, stall is over there. When I send the last issue, I only rely on donation, incidentally. I haven't got any source of income. When I send a it cost me about $5,000 for every issue that I sent. 
When I sent the last issue, I had $7.95 left in the bank. <laughs> I've got $8,000 up to today. <laughs> so so the, the, the Lord is there, so with your help, we can carry on. I, I have made a, a, a bargain with Our Lady. I said, look, I said, when the money stops coming, I know I'm not wanted anymore, so I'll stop. <laughs> and that's simple as that. <laughs> but before I leave, I'd just like to leave you with a little thought. The power of a smile. Do you know how much difference you can make to people's lives by just giving them a smile? Try to do it in the street. Try to do it everywhere. Give them a smile. And a smile that doesn't like that, <laughs> but a smile that comes really for the heart that you love that person. And you will find that this will not only make them happy, but it will make you also a lot happier. So I leave you with that thought. And thank you very much for listening to me.